Hi, P6 students. Welcome to our math 6 class. And this is Miss Claire. We are now on chapter 8 and it talks about probability. Are you familiar with this lesson? Probability means chance or likelihood. In this chapter, you will learn two topics. We have describe and compare possible outcomes and carry out chance experiments. Take a look here. I have here a picture. This picture is in a game zone or, a, or in a game area. Look at the children. They have some skins here. Three skins per round. So you can increase your chance of winning by playing more rounds. Look at the girl. You have one out of five chances of scoring 10 points. Can you score 10 points more frequently with more spins? So there is only one 10 out of five chances, right? The other one, the boy with the yellow jacket. Uh, what's the chance of scoring 10 points for the first spin? Okay, so if you have answer for these questions, you can share that during our class. Now the other boy, he will pick the gold ball to win the grand prize. So with these spins here, children, do you think it is possible to score 18 points with one spin only? Why or why not? So you can share your answers on our class. Okay, let's start with lesson A, describe and compare possible outcomes. Okay, look at this boy. He has some blue and red balls. So what is the proportion of red balls inside the box? What is the probability of Ron to pick up a red or a blue ball? So you can use colored blocks to represent the blue and the red balls. So let's try to answer this during our class or if you know the answer, you can share it later, okay? I have here another problem. Take a look. What is the probability or the chance of Paul taking yellow bean? So there are eight yellow beans inside or on a plate. Paul takes, take a look, takes a jelly bean without looking. So what is the probability of Paul taking a yellow jelly bean? Only one yellow jelly bean. So two out of eight jelly beans are yellow. So Paul has two out of eight chances of taking a yellow jelly bean. Two out of eight or two eighths is equal to one quarter. Or if we change that into percentage, that's equal to 25%. So Paul has a 25% or one quarter chance of taking a yellow bean. Okay, so to describe a, a probability P6, we can use a fraction or a percentage. Since the chance of taking a yellow jelly bean is less than 50%, it is unlikely that Paul will take a yellow jelly bean. Okay, another example here. What is the probability of Paul taking a green jelly bean? Why does Paul have an equal chance of taking a green jelly bean and a yellow jelly bean? How many green are here? There are two, right? And there are also two. It means they have an equal chance of getting a green or a yellow jelly bean. Okay. This is now the probability of Paul of taking a red jelly bean. If we can see there are four red jelly beans, four out of eight jelly beans are red, so Paul has four out of eight chances of taking a red jelly bean. Four eight is equal to one half right or 50%. So Paul has a 50% of chance of chance of taking a red jelly bean. Since the chance of taking a red jelly bean is 50%, we have what we call even chance. Do you remember that? Even chance of getting a red jelly bean. Okay, we have what we call type of events. 
Priya can turn left to go to the zoo or turn right to go to the bird park. Priya cannot turn right and left at the same time, right? Turning left and turning right are mutually exclusive events. It means they cannot be done at the same time. But if Priya can turn left and turn on the horn of, the, of her car, she can do that. So turning left and sounding the horn are what we call not mutually exclusive events. So remember children, doing two events that cannot be done at the same time is what we call mutually exclusive events. So think of more exclusive or mutually exclusive events and you can share that during our class. Now let's go to lesson B and it talks about carry, carry out chance experiments. Okay, let's take a look here. Eddie rolled a pair of dice and recorded the sum of the two numbers on the top face of its dice. So what are the sums that he can expect? So for example, when he roll the first die there will be three and the second dice will be one so it means the sum is four okay take a look here how can eddie carry out a chance experiment to find out which sum will appear more frequently when he rolls two dice okay so we will try that during our class let's have here sums of numbers rolled on two dice Kaz rolled two dice and recorded a sum of four by adding both numbers on the dice. She rolled the two dice ten times and recorded the sums and frequencies in table A. Take a look here. He then rolled two virtual dice 200 times and recorded the sums and frequencies in table B. So let's compare the result of her and of the roll dice. In table A, it does not really show which sum occurs more frequently. Look at the frequencies. They are almost the same. If zero, there are three zeros. There are lots of one and two. There are two twos. So there is no clear pattern for this, okay? Because she only rolled it ten times only. How about when she rolled the dice 200 times? Take a look. Okay. Table shows a higher frequency for the sum of 6 and 7. Take a look. 6 and 7 is 28 and 34. Then we have an 8 with the highest being 7. Okay. So the table B shows a more real reliable indicator of which sum will occur the most often as there is a large number of repetitions of throwing two dice because cash do it for 200 times so there will be a more number of repetitions or sums that will occur okay so, why do you think the sums of 2 and 12 have the lowest frequency? What do you think? Okay, next. Now, I have here another example for you for this. We have Katie's spinner. Katie wants to create a colored wheel for her party, so she carries out a chance experiment to find out which color the spinner is most likely and least likely to fall on. Katie made three predictions. Take a look. Look at the colors of her spinner. The color that the spinner will most likely, likely to fall on is purple. The color that the spinner will be least likely to fall is on green. What do you think? There is an equal chance of the spinner landing on blue or yellow. Okay, let's see if her predictions will really come true. Okay, take a look here. She spun the spinner 30 times only to check her prediction and recorded the results in the frequency table as shown. She found out that there is no regular patterns, right, of outcomes out of 30 repetitions. But when she spun it 300 times and recorded the results in the table as shown, what have you observed? Take a look, the second or the table below. 
Yes, there is now a pattern. The color that the spinner is least likely to land is on green. Out of 300 repetitions, it only landed 30 landed on green. Let's check. See, there are only 30 on green. Next. For the probability then is 10% because 30 landed out of 300 means that is one tenth or 10%. This is because there is only one. Look at our spinner. There is only one out of eight um, colors, right? So the eight or the green color has the smallest proportion or the probability to fall on or to spin. Okay, next. The color that the spinner is most likely to land on is, yes, it's the purple. The purple has 117 out of 300 repeti repetitions. So the probability is 39%. This is because, look at our spinner. There are three purple out of eight. So the, the chances is very high. So the results show that Katie's predictions were true, right? As there were many repetitions of spinning the wheel, a regular pattern of outcomes can be observed. So if we are going to spin it the higher number, of course, the repetitions becomes regular. Compared to you will only spin for 5 or 10. You cannot see the regularity of your spin. Okay. Okay, physics. That's all about carry out chance experiment. I will discuss more about this lesson during our class. Thank you.